In the past season, the Golden State Warriors faced an untimely playoff departure, surprisingly ousted by the Los Angeles Lakers in the second round. Despite the setback, Coach Steve Kerr's response was pragmatic, acknowledging the team's lack of championship contending form. As the curtains lifted off free agency on July 1st, the Warriors' new general manager, Mike Dunleavy Jr., sprung into action. While the trade of Jordan Poole to the Washington Wizards for Chris Paul garnered the spotlight, the Warriors' activity didn't stop there. Shortly after, they inked power forward Dario Saric to a one-year, $2.7 million deal. While Saric's signing might not have garnered headlines, a closer look at the Warriors' championship-winning squads of yesteryears revealed the pivotal role played by impactful bench players, often including a European element. Notable names such as Ognian Kuzmich, Zaza Pachulia, Jonas Jerebko, and Nemanja Bialica come to mind. Sarek's addition seems to continue this trend. While not a star, he fits the profile of a versatile player who can provide a boost off the bench. In this video, we unravel the brilliance of acquiring Sarek and delve into how his presence could significantly contribute to the Warriors' potential pursuit of yet another NBA championship. Sarek is from Croatia and was born in the city of Šibenik, where the late and great Drazen Petrovic is also from. Sarek grew up in a basketball family as both of his parents used to play. Dario started his career with the local team Zarinski before moving to the Croatian capital and playing for Zagreb. He quickly became one of the best young prospects in Europe and won the MVP award at the Cita di Roma EuroLeague tournament when he was 17 years old. When he turned 18, Sarek signed with the biggest team in Croatia, Sabona, which has produced many NBA players like Petrovic, Gordon Garacek, and Ivica Zubac. Despite being one of the youngest players on the team, Sarek was the leader and during that period he signed with his current agent, Misko Raznjatovic, who also represents Nikola Jokic. Sarek dominated the Adriatic League, won the MVP award in 2014, and decided to declare for the NBA draft. He was selected 12th overall by the Orlando Magic and was immediately traded to the Philadelphia 76ers. Like many other European prospects, Sarek decided to stay a couple more years and develop in Europe before coming to the NBA. That proved to be a smart move by him and his agent, as Sarek signed a deal with the Turkish team Anadolu Efes, which at the time was coached by one of the greatest European coaches of all time, Dusan Ivkovic. Despite having a slow start with Anadolu Efes, Sarek showed his talent and was named the EuroLeague 2014-15 season's MVP of the month in November becoming the youngest player in EuroLeague history to win the monthly MVP award. That same year, he received the 2014 FIBA Europe Young Men's Player of the Year for the second consecutive year. He was consistently improving, and in 2016, he had a 50-40-90 season in the EuroLeague. After two years in Turkey, it was time to make his move to the NBA. He immediately got a chance to play in Philadelphia and score 21 points in his third game with the 76ers. Joel Embiid missed significant time that season and Sarek was the one who stepped up in his role. Despite being just a rookie, he showed his versatility and was able to play in multiple positions, from small forward to center. Sarek was named Rookie of the Month for both February and March after scoring a career-high 32 points in a 117-107 win over the Chicago Bulls. He started 36 of 81 games he played in for the Sixers in his rookie season, averaging 12.8 points, 6.3 rebounds, and 2.2 assists per game. He finished second in the Rookie of the Year voting behind Malcolm Brogdon and was named to the All-Rookie First Team in 2017. A fun fact is that Sarek received a total of 266 votes for the Rookie of the Year award, which was less than the 414 that went for Brogdon, but still more than his Sixers teammate Joel Embiid, who finished third with 177 votes. The following season was even better for Sarek as he became a regular starter for the Sixers. He played 78 games in the regular season, averaging 14.6 points, 6.7 rebounds, and 2.6 assists per game on 39.3% shooting from the field. He definitely established himself as an NBA player, and even though it did increase his value, it led him to being offered in a trade package the next season. Things dramatically changed for Sarek as he was the centerpiece in the Jimmy Butler trade that sent him, Jared Bayless, Robert Covington, and a 2022 second-round pick to Minnesota in exchange for Butler and Justin Patton. 
The trade was a huge blow for Sarek, as he went from being a starter on a good team to coming off the bench for a bad team. Sarek even considered returning to Europe at the time since he wasn't happy in Minnesota both on and off the floor. Still, he somehow finished the season with the Timberwolves averaging 10.5 points, 5.5 rebounds, and 1.5 assists per game. I'm sure we can all sympathize with Sarek being somewhere he didn't want to, but obviously you like being here with us. So let us know you don't hate us by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. Moving on. After a short season with the Timberwolves, Sarek demanded a trade and ended up in Phoenix along with the draft rights to Cameron Johnson in exchange for the draft rights to Jared Culver, completing a trade set on draft day. The 2019-2020 season was the last season of his rookie deal and he had to prove that he belonged in the league. Moving to Phoenix ended up being excellent for him as he quickly got the starting power forward position on the team. He finished that season averaging 10.7 points, 6.2 rebounds, and 1.9 assists on a career-high 47.6% shooting from the field. The Suns saw Sarek in their future plans, and the team signed him to a three-year deal. He started the 2020-21 season well, but was one of the first Suns players to get COVID and missed almost an entire month. That was a rough year for the NBA as a whole. He finished the season averaging 8.7 points, 3.8 rebounds, and 1.3 assists per game. That was the Suns' best year in decades, but it turned into a real nightmare for Sarek. They made it to the NBA Finals for the first time since 1993, a year before Sarek was born. In the opening game of the series against the Milwaukee Bucks, Sarek suffered a torn ACL in his right knee, and on the following day, the Suns announced that he would be out indefinitely. It turned out to be a real tough injury, and Sarek was forced to sit out the entire 2021-22 season. After a couple of surgeries, Sarek was cleared to come back just in time for the 2022-23 season. He did not have the same role with the Suns, playing just above 14 minutes per game, which was much less than he expected, and it was obvious that things would not work for him anymore in Phoenix. Right before the NBA trade deadline, Sarek was traded, alongside a 2029 second round pick and cash considerations, to the Oklahoma City Thunder in exchange for Darius Basley. He played in only 20 games for the Thunder, coming off the bench averaging 7.4 points and 3.3 rebounds per game, on excellent shooting of 51.5% from the field and 39.1% from the three-point territory. So, in just two years, Sarek went from being a starter on a championship contender through one of the toughest injuries in basketball to a freshly recovered veteran who needed another chance in the NBA. The Warriors recognized his value and decided to bring him in, and there are multiple reasons for that. After the Warriors traded for Chris Paul, the veteran point guard had very nice things to say about Sarek from the year and a half he played with him in Phoenix. Sarek was not the main target for Paul's assists in Phoenix, as the team had Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton. But Sarek was a great role player who often played the pick and pop game with Paul, and that is one of the reasons why he was brought in. Paul has never come off the bench in his entire career, or exactly 1,214 regular season games, but that may be necessary now with the Warriors. If CP3 is with the second unit, Sarek would be of great use playing alongside him. Sarek isn't the explosive lob threat that centers such as DeAndre Jordan or Tyson Chandler once was for Paul, but he's worked well with all types of pick and roll partners. Sarek is a skilled big who can pick and pop capably and slip through cracks in the defense for layups. Sarek will basically step into the role that Otto Porter Jr., Jamichael Green, and Nemanja Bialica had with the team. His style of play mostly resembles Bialica, who is also from Europe and has played for a Turkish team in the EuroLeague. Just like Bialica, Sarek can shoot from the outside, is a smart cutter, and can finish at the rim. And most importantly, he can run and make the right pass with the Warrior system. He is also a veteran who would prefer to have a smaller role on a championship contender rather than instability on a weaker team. It all sounds good, but will Sarek really be an asset to the Warriors' Chris Paul experiment? Let us know what you think in the comments below. So, we're not saying that Sarek is the one who will make the difference between an OK team and a championship contender. Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and Draymond Green are still running the show in Golden State. The addition of Chris Paul can be the difference maker, and Paul needs players like Sarek who will have 10 to 15 effective minutes on the floor next to him. Sarek is not a player everybody talks about, but like many European guys, he knows exactly what his teams need of him. 
All we can do is hope that Sarek will stay healthy and play his role for the Warriors. That's all for today. I hope you all enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. If you enjoy this kind of NBA content, be sure to like, subscribe, and click to watch this next video.